Can the environment that surrounds you refresh you, replenish you, renew your ability to focus and concentrate? Many researchers have found that access to nature, whether it's a trip to the wilderness, or a walk through an urban park, or even simply enjoying the view of a tree outside your window, can refresh your ability to concentrate. I'm exploring the question, do urban soundscapes, the collection of sounds that originate from humans and animals and weather, do these soundscapes nourish us or deplete us? Do some sounds create stress? And can some sounds relieve stress? And in particular, what role do trees play in the composition of urban soundscapes and in turn, how those soundscapes affect humans? An invasive insect called the emerald ash borer has killed hundreds of thousands of trees across eastern North America, and as a result, neighborhoods that had many trees were quickly transformed to streets with few trees. I gathered sound recordings in the neighborhoods before the trees died, and again after the trees were removed, being careful to collect the sound recordings exactly one year apart. I've analyzed these recordings and identified the source of each and every sound and then compared the recordings for multiple sound attributes including frequency, time, energy or loudness, and entropy. The result? In some, but not all cases, the measure for biological sounds like birds and insects changed when the trees were removed. And interestingly, so did the quality of the silence. With fewer trees, noise attenuation decreased, meaning more human mechanical sounds were present in the background silence, which really wasn't silent at all. But what does it matter if urban soundscapes change? Are sounds like this beneficial? and our sounds like this detrimental. If so, how can we tell? Will the subtle changes to urban soundscapes associated with the loss of trees affect humans? I'm currently having volunteers listen to these recordings, some with many trees, some with few trees, while taking simple tests for the strength of their concentration, otherwise known as directed attention. The tests are easy. In the Necker Cube Pattern Control Test, participants stare at a line drawing of a cube and indicate the number of times the cube seems to change perspective. Go ahead, give it a try. Does the cube direction seem to flip while you're staring at it? If so, that's a function of how fatigued you are. In the Stroop test, participants must quickly decide on the color that they see and not on the word that they read. This requires your brain to pay attention to both the color, in this case red, while ignoring the word green. The results will tell us if exposure to sounds in nature will actually help improve the strength with which we pay attention. And ultimately, the quality with which we experience life in our cities.